What exactly is the difference between a static phase converter, a rotary phase converter, and a variable frequency drive, and how can you pick between these three different options for three phase power conversion? Gavin Gear here for makingwithmetal.com. That's exactly what we're going to talk about in this video. And I should note that this is a part of a series. You're going to want to check out the first video and post that I published that covers three phase power fundamentals if you haven't done so. How is three phase power different than single phase power? What do the respective electrical panels and wiring considerations look like? And so on and so forth. Continuing that discussion, let's talk about these three different power conversion options, starting with a static phase converter. What is a static phase converter? It's basically a box with some circuitry and capacitors inside. It uses capacitors to start a three phase motor on three phase power, but then that third leg drops off and the motor runs on single phase power or two legs. So you therefore get two thirds the power you would if you had it connected to three phase power. They are inexpensive and for applications like a table saw where you might have five horsepower and you can totally deal with only having two thirds of that, it can be a great solution because it's something that you can just tack on to your piece of equipment, plug it into the single phase power and go. A table saw isn't a demanding you know, type of application for rotational speed consistency or anything like that could be a good solution. I looked at static phase converters for the sum of my equipment and decided they were not the right solution. So how about rotary phase converters? Rotary phase converters, and I'll get more in depth on this on a rotary phase converter technology overview video, but they use an idler motor and they synthesize a third leg. There's a little bit of special math that goes on between L1 and L2, between L2 and L3, and between L3 and L1 they are 120 degrees out of phase with each other, which is in perfect balance. And what's great about it is they're highly efficient. It's a one-time expense. You get one rotary phase converter. You can run multiple pieces of equipment off of it. And it's pretty much plug and play. I've got three different machines back here. I've got a Warner Swassi lathe here that has a single three phase five horsepower motor, won that at an auction, just repainted it. Pretty cool piece of equipment, I'll have more content on that. Was able to plug it right into the AI20 industrial series rotary phase converter that I have from American Rotary. Awesome. Then I added more equipment. I've got a Cincinnati Sonova 80 milling machine back there. That machine has three three-phase motors. It has a seven and a half horsepower main spindle drive motor. It's got a motor in the knee that runs the hydraulics and the power feeds for the XYZ. And then it also has a three-phase coolant pump motor. I was able to run that right into my sub panel for the rotary phase converter, turn the machine on and go. That's a little bit of a work in the progress. I'm still working on that machine, but super nice to have one clean source of power and to be able to run three three-phase motors in a single machine with that power. And then I also have a Mil Kearney and Trekker Milwaukee 2H horizontal milling machine back there that I just got into perfect operating condition. It's a World War II era machine. It has a single three-phase five horsepower motor that runs the spindle and the XYZ power feeds. The coolant pump is mechanically driven off of that main motor as well. So I've also got a, another work in progress here, which is a pedestal grinder that's a horse and a half, and it's a three-phase motor as well. So what's great about having a rotary phase converter is you can have one solution, you can go to auctions, you can pick up industrial equipment relatively cheaply usually, because it's harder for people to hook up in their homes, so sometimes it goes for a bit lower price. And then run multiple breakers on a sub panel, if you so wish to, that kind of thing. But there's a third power conversion option that's also compelling, and that's the variable frequency drive, or VFD. What this does is there's two types of VFDs fundamentally. One where you have three-phase power coming in, normal oscillating three-phase power with the typical sine wave pattern that it has coming in, and three-phase power goes out, but with an altered waveform, it's kind of a square wave that changes the frequency so that you can vary the speed of the motor. That's the key thing that uh, VFD has that the other solutions don't. 
Another type of VFD, like this one right here, takes single phase power in and then it synthesizes square wave three phase power out. So you can do essentially the same thing, but instead of having to have three phase power coming in, you can have single phase power coming in. I'm gonna use this, I had originally purchased this for use with my Precision Matthews lathe because I thought I wanted to get a three phase motor and have it be variable speed. But when I looked at the wiring complexity for this lathe with all, all of its disconnects and safety switches, contactors, all that stuff, I decided it was a bit too much of a project for me to take on at this point. So I ordered it with a single phase motor and the only downside there is, like with all single phase motors, you get a little bit of torque ripple because the, it does not have the same sine wave pattern that a three phase motor has where there's always power going to one of the windings. With single phase power, you have that zero point and so you get a little bit of torque ripple. So I might upgrade that lathe to three phase power and use either the rotary phase converter or something like this VFD. So if you have to have variable speed, then a VFD is a good solution. The problem is if you have multiple motors like I do on my Cincinnati Sonova 80, you're gonna have to have multiple VFDs or figure something else out. So a VFD is optimal for variable speed control with a single motor application. You can use multiples of them. If you want plug and play power, I highly suggest looking at a rotary phase converter, a great investment the machine just runs off of it. The AI-20 is outdoors. You don't even hear it in this building. And it's weatherproof It's in, in a NEMA 3 enclosure. So it, I don't have to listen to it. I don't even really have to think about it. I just turn it on at the beginning of the work session and turn it off a little bit later. And if you just need an inexpensive solution, a static phase converter is definitely worth a look because they can be had for under $100. And if it's for a non-demanding you know, application like a table saw, it could be a great solution. So I hope that gives you a high level overview of these three different three phase power conversion technologies and when you'd want to use one solution over another. Just like anything in life, there's trade-offs either way you slice it. But uh, I'll remind you that I have a complete write-up on makingwithmetal.com with a bit more information about each of these solutions. So if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't want to miss any of the action here in GavinTube, metalworking, reloading, shooting, all of it, make sure you're subscribed with notifications. We've got more three phase and rotary phase converter content coming up. So I hope that you'll stay tuned and get subscribed. Thanks to you all. Until next time, happy metalworking.